Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Leadership Jam Session. Today's guest is Sean Georges, currently serves as a Senior Vice President and General Counsel for a publicly traded company. Sean is a former Marine Corps officer who graduated with distinction from the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis. And I invited Sean to come on the Leadership Jam Session after watching his TEDx talk on the essence of authentic leadership. Sean, welcome to the Jam Session. Great to be here. Thank you. Wish I uh, were closer, but we're we're across country. Yeah, but share the same uh, the same passion. I think we do absolutely. And um, yeah, I was uh, inspired by your TEDx talks uh, when you sent it over to me. So perhaps maybe we can start there, and you can share share a little bit about your talk and what inspired you and your message. Absolutely. Yeah. The um, the TED Talk was an opportunity for me, I think, to uh, express what I had learned and had had become convinced of about what was at the heart of leadership. It really is wrapped around and springs from a story that uh, had to do with my daughter, who was in a near fatal accident. And what I observed at the time of the accident and looking back, she, she did survive spoiler alert, yeah. uh, but a good spoiler alert. Absolutely. Uh, Peyton did survive the accident, but what I observed when I look back at what happened in what helped to save her life was teamwork and leadership on the ground from the time the vehicles collided uh, through her getting to the hospital helicopter to the children's hospital and then the long journey to recovery was this whole network of leaders that and leadership that was happening all around me. If there's anything, I guess, called a classically trained leader, I suppose uh, the government has poured enough uh, money into me uh, and and to my training and development uh, to call me that. But after graduating from the Naval Academy and and the commission in the Marine Corps, serving in the Marines, et cetera, for all these years, I had been prepared, I think, to to lead at some level. But what I saw in these complete strangers at this accident scene was the real the real thing the things I had learned that were true, the absolute truth of what happens when people come together uh, to accomplish a shared mission. And they do so as servants. They're serving both the mission, and but they're serving one another. So in this story, I saw an opportunity to, to share some of the things that I confirmed uh, in the Marine Corps and uh, that I had just learned time and again over the years. So it was a, it was a difficult talk to give. These are not easy uh, to, to boil some wisdom down into about 15 minutes is harder than I thought it would be. Well, I give you a lot of credit. I was watching you give that talk and I sat there and as you were talking about the story of your daughter and Peyton and the accident, and uh, I have to say, I don't think I could have gave that talk uh, yeah. without just breaking down and 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 crying. I mean, you know, glad to hear that it 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 was a happy ending. I mean, she's doing well, right? She's fully yes. recovered. Yes, she is. And I want to take a moment to thank you. I, I'm not sure everyone realizes uh, that your background includes some serious first responder duty, and uh, I I have become just absolutely focused on saying thank you to to those who are often strangers uh, who put their lives on the line and reach out and save us sometimes from ourselves. So thank you for your service. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Not too many people know about my my background uh, as a firefighter. It seemed like that was, uh, well, it was almost like another lifetime ago. Yes. Almost, uh, you know, almost 20 years ago. But um and I do appreciate uh, how you talked about how you went back afterwards and met with the first responders yes. and took the time to to thank them. And yes, yeah, so yeah, I kind of 
uh, talk about, you know, Marines love missions. This was once Peyton got to the woods, once she got out of the woods, she was recovering. My attention turned to my next mission. And, and that was to learn who were these people? Who were these complete strangers to us in our local community who stepped up and extracted her body from this wreckage and stabilized her and put her in an ambulance and then to a hospital and who were those people and then then they put her on a a, a life flight helicopter and there was a, a three-member crew that flew her to cincinnati and who were those people and who was in the emergency room and this whole series this of human beings my mission became one of gratitude so I found out who they were. I found ways to meet them and hug them and ask them questions and and let them know they were appreciated and find ways to publicly recognize them. And I was just absolutely on a personal mission. And I wish we did more of those kinds of things mm -hmm. uh, in our society. But um, in any event, I was I was not going to miss that opportunity yeah. yeah it'd be amazing if you know as we uh just apply that into the, the corporate world if leaders could take the time to spend more time acknowledging yes your people yeah. and recognizing them for all the hard work that they do right couldn't agree more and you know that kind of gets to the heart of i i think the message which is one of how you define yourself as a human being walking around the world engaging uh, with others, with events. I, along with uh, uh, my good friend, uh, Dr. John Buford, we've been working on this book, a uh, book around leadership. He's a retired Lieutenant Colonel in the Marines and and uh, we've been friends since third grade. So after we left the Marine Corps and did some other things, he and in, in ac the academic world and me in the business and legal world, um, we, we've been writing this book and kind of putting our our thoughts together around leadership we've gotten clarity after working on a book trying to craft a book for seven years um, which has probably been too long but being thoughtful about what we believed and what was true about leadership and the whole idea is is that if you embrace and and accept and step up to and define yourself as a person with leadership responsibilities in your life. Not as the leader, not as I'm in charge kind of leadership, but someone who understands that they have an opportunity to influence the people around them. Uh, I, think there, I think there's a chance then to move from there into authentic leadership. And we can talk more about that. You know, it is interesting. People just love to throw out the term authentic leadership. Right. Right. And, and you know, a lot of leaders out there just use these big, broad terms. And here are the eyes are rolling right now. Yeah. Right. W without yeah. really understanding right. what it truly means, or if you ask them to define them, they couldn't even tell you what it, what right. it truly means. Right. And, and maybe you can share a little bit more about, about authentic leadership and, Absolutely. and how you define it and to help our leaders out there truly understand what it means. There's not a, authentic leadership with a TM trademark. And we really wrestled with the use of this term, but it is about the real thing. Authenticity, not uh, what what is real about leadership. And when when you get really down to the heart of it, it I tell you what, I, I always go back to probably the first day at uh, the basic school, Quantico, Virginia, they were, uh, we'd been commissioned as Marines, Marine officers, but we were second lieutenants. And we had a lot to learn about uh, the Marine Corps leading Marines. But from the very beginning, from the beginning, there was this idea, concept, but reality that our chief responsibility regardless of what our job was, our Marine Occupational Specialty, MOS, our job was leadership. Our responsibility was to lead. We 
learned that we had a sacred, a deeply held responsibility to serve our Marines in the direction of our mission. Mm -hmm. uh, service for these young men and women, sometimes they were older than us, uh, that we were now responsible for, to responsible to lead in the direction of a shared mission. There was a directional nature to it. There was a, uh, a depth that had to come both from the head and the heart and the hands. Uh, it was a, uh, and it was something that was, it was more than just, you know, you had a rank on your shoulder yeah. uh, that's, or a commission signed by some, uh, someone back in uh, Washington, DC. It was that relationship mission-based servant leadership. And once we got that, that it wasn't about us, it was about these Marines that we were there to serve in the direction of accomplishing a mission. The whole concept of serving as a leader, servant leadership began to embed itself. And that was many years ago, almost 40 now. And it has absolutely defined um, what I think is true about leadership. You know, I, I think the one thing you said there is something that definitely resonates with me, something that I always talk about, particularly with emerging leaders, you know, the the ones that want to become uh, a leader of, of leading teams or new managers that I that I work with and train. The one thing that I try to get across to them is what you just said before. It's no longer about you. It really isn't. When you try to make it about you, then that's when you you lose your your people. Right. Yes. You're no longer that that servient leader. And it isn't about the titles. No. It's not. It's not about titles, nope. it's not about rank, right? Nor does it come from those things. And you know, this was a part of the whole transition from the military into the civilian world. I, I think for a lot of those who are making that transition, and it is a challenge for many reasons, cultural. What do I wear? You know, what do they value on the outside, et cetera? But also, it is each and every one of us has to figure out who are we as a leader without the rank, without the uniform, without the culture? How do I influence another human being in the direction of some kind of a of a shared mission which i think is really the kind of the essence of of leadership our, our ability to influence another person uh so that they it impacts their commitment and 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 their movement actions in the direction of a shared of a mission it's about that influence through relationship and so deciding trying to determine who we are now when you take the uniform off and the rank off and you're out there and you're just out there running mm -hmm. uh, is is a real challenge. And I kept exploring and coming back to the heart of what we what I observed in the best leaders uh, I served with in the Marines uh, and at, at the Naval Academy and and also what seemed to be actual leadership and what was just pure management, which you've got to have, we, but we do need to separate the two. We manage things and processes and right. We, those, those need to be managed. We get the opportunity to lead through service human beings. And once you can distinguish those two and realize you've got responsibilities on both sides of that equation, now you've got a shot at, I, I think, becoming a fully engaged human being in the world. Um, so, you, but you've got to get both of those and getting comfortable with what it means to serve others in the direction of a shared mission in your life is, is the key. Yeah, you know, it, it truly is a balance. The ones who are leaders understand that balance, right? They know they have to manage a process, but they also know the people side of it. Yes, uh, which yes. at times is is even more important. Uh, yes, tipping our relationships. So here, what is the problem we are trying to solve? So I think the problem we are trying to solve is that in this country and and maybe across the planet. We do not do a, an effective job of 
developing leadership in people. We, we, we haven't really defined clearly what it means to lead. We haven't figured out how on a, on a, on a wide basis, how to help people to step up and, and grapple with and, and embrace who they are as a, as a leader. So we had this massive leadership failure that you can blame on anything you want, pick your, you know, pick, pick your target. But what I think it's got to come down to is that each of us has to take responsibility for our own leadership journey. It's what uh, my friend John Buford and I call the the leadership journey. And we are going to have to take responsibility for it because nobody's going to come along and, you know, sort of place that sword on our shoulder. And there is no title. Leadership doesn't spring from a title, doesn't spring from rank, doesn't really spring from I've got more experience than you doesn't spring from uh, body type, skin color, gender, sexual orientation, none of those things. It springs from the head and the heart and the hands. It's about who you are, what you do, what you know, and then how you engage with the one person or with the people around you. So we can all get there, but the thing that is producing leaders now uh, across the, we'll stay with the United States, is failing. That's the problem that I think we need to be working on. How do we get more people to be comfortable and confident in stepping up uh, to the leadership responsibilities in their lives? No, I think that's well said. And you're right. Leaders at times really struggle with even just admitting that they may not know what yes. they're doing, right? Yes. And, and particularly, you know, when, when you're new to managing, there's that pressure on you, right? That, that you know, you have to have all the answers. And, and I think that's what happens at times. That's what impacts the authenticity, right? You're trying to be something you're not. Absolutely. And it also gets to what, what is it about, what are you really doing when you're leading? Mm -hmm. It's not about having all of the answers. Leaders are about creating space, creating and, and sometimes holding that space. Leaders are about an environment. They fill that environment with, um, with energy, sometimes focus, uh, sometimes clarity, with knowing one another, with understanding the mission. They put the assets in there and, and they, they bring information and they bring people together to create this, this environment that can accomplish the things that need to be accomplished. Your job as a leader is not to have uh, the answer. Right. In fact, if you've got an answer, it might not be the best answer. Let's let's work on the best answer. Yes, my people have pointed that out many times over the years. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. So, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I, and I love the phrase. Sometimes a leader's responsibility is is to, to you come armed only with a question. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe you need to work on refining the question with your team. It's not even about getting to the, wait, are we asking the right question here? So part of it is about understanding what it means to lead. To lead is to influence in, in the direction of the shared mission. It's to serve one another so that you're, bring, you're helping them to bring all of this stuff that they can bring together uh, into accomplishing this thing. And that is your role as a leader. So admitting that you don't know, admitting that you don't yet have a clear enough understanding in some fashion, you don't have to walk around sort of saying, I'm a flawed human being, although you can, and there are times where that's appropriate, but saying, I don't know, and help me to understand, and let's figure this out together. That is a p powerful, uh, authentic thing that a person who wants to influence, who, who is involved in this leading thing needs to do. Yeah. You know, I love the concept of, you know, the shared mission and creating yes. the environment. And yeah, because sometimes we just make things much more complicated than what they really need to be. And we like doing right, that. We, we do. We love doing that. And <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll go back. I remember when we were talking 
uh, the other day and you were sharing a story about Peyton. And, and I think this fits in exactly what we're talking about. I remember you sharing how, um, you know, they needed, she was pinned in the, in, in the car and they needed to get her out. I can speak to this because I came from that background on the first responder side. So we've got tens of thousands of dollars in equipment that we can use. And it was, I think you said one of the firefighters, a simple idea that he was able to free her up and get her out. Um, yes. Didn't come from an officer. It came from. Right. Right. So when I look back at the scene, back uh, talking about Peyton's accident, the police captain wasn't on the scene. The, the chief of the fire department wasn't standing there barking out orders. The president of the hospital wasn't there. The, you know, people, positions of authority were not there in charge. I'm in charge of the scene and sort of barking out orders with people waiting to to receive their orders so they could instead, what you had was regardless of title and rank, you had a group of people who were absolutely focused on a mission and they were bringing all of their, of course, ideas and experience. They were problem solving, et cetera, but they were asking themselves. In fact, one of the um, first responders there was a sheriff's deputy. And I interviewed him after the accident uh, happened a couple of years later. In fact, I was preparing for the TED talk and I just said, what, what was going through your mind before at the scene and before you moved? And I'll tell you what he did when he moved. He said, John, I asked myself the question I always ask myself at, at every scene, whether it's an accident or a crime scene. And I said, what's that? And he said, I, I asked myself, what's my best and highest role? And I said, okay, there's a story behind that here. And we'll talk about it in a moment. But I said, so what, what answer did you come to? He said, I knew that we were not, we, she didn't have enough time. Peyton was literally crushed against what was left of the, now the passenger side of the car. And she probably had minutes to live. He knew that they did not have enough time to use the jaws of life to, to, to take the door off so they could extract her body from the, and thought she was, she was caught in there. Uh, she had been T-boned by this cold truck, just to explain a little bit. In any event, he asked himself that question. I said, what answer did you come up with? He said, we needed another perspective on this. I needed, somebody needed to get up on top of that car and look down to see what, how she was caught inside the car. So I asked myself, what is my best and highest role? And I moved. He jumped up on the hood of the car stood up, leaned over, could see down through what was left in the in the sunroof and realized what was happening in there, what the state of her body and how her legs were literally caught on what was left of the driver's side of the, the well down there. And it took him asking the question, what is my best and highest role? And moving and getting a new perspective. I think that's such a great leadership lesson. Sometimes leaders have to help serve their, their teammates by getting a different perspective on the problem or on the issue. Now, the magical thing that happened in Peyton's situation was that he, he saw that her legs were crossed in this space about three inches in diameter. He tried to pull on her legs. They wouldn't move, but he realized she had, she was going to cheer practice that, that morning and he could see her shoes. He untied first one shoe just in the crazy attempt to try to loosen her feet and her legs. And it worked. Shoe came untied, removed her foot, moved her leg, other shoe untied moved her legs, they were able to then break in the window, secure her against the right side door, uh, secure her neck because her neck was broken and extract her. He told me, he looked at me across the table and he said, if she had double tied her shoes that morning, 
she might not be here today. Mm -hmm. What's my best and highest role? And then you find out, and sometimes you ask your teammates, what's my best and highest role? What do you need from me? What do you need most from me? What do you need me to stop doing? Uh, mm -hmm. Sir, need you to step out of the way. We've got this. Help me to lead. Give me some authority so I can lead in this problem. If you do are in a position of authority and you can delegate all of these things, what is my best and highest role? Just, just a powerful moment from the Peyton situation, which also illustrates, I think, a good kind of thought process as you're leading. It really does. Yeah. Your story is, is as I said, when I opened up the this, this jam session, it was inspirational just to hear you, you talk about it. And again, the leadership lessons learned, right? Even as simple as I need another perspective. So important. I think it's so important for many of us out there just to even ask the question, what is my best, best and highest, highest role? role? Yeah. It also illustrated the universal nature, I think, of, of what I think authentic leadership is about and what you're going through when you're in the moment, in the heat of the moment, in trying to influence, trying to move things forward, being a part of accomplishing uh, as a, as a, in a relationship or with a team. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just so, th so the end of this story with Peyton is that I was powerless to do anything. Uh, I was, in fact, I was so dependent on so many people, many of which I, of whom I didn't even know. How humbling. I was going to say it must have been very difficult to be in the middle of that and not be in control. Yeah. Because that's, I think that's a part of how we, we sort of, we think leadership is about, well, I'm going to go manage this problem or yeah. manage these people, or I'm going to go control the outcome of what a, it's just, it's nonsense. We should be humble. So here's another part of authenticity. Humility comes from being able to see things clearly. I am really not that powerful. I am really flawed. I am really not in control. And the whole Peyton situation, I couldn't even save my daughter from getting crushed by a coal truck. So what could I do? Ask the question, what's my best and highest role? And I thought about these first responders. Who are these people? Who is recognizing them? Do they realize what they've done here? They need to meet Peyton. She survived. She lived. They need to hear Peyton and I and our family say thank you. They probably need to get a hug. Well, whether they wanted to or not, they were going to get a hug from me, a bear hug. And I was going to make sure that they knew person to person, face to face, that they had done something important and they had saved a life. So that became my mission. That was my best and highest role. That was the gratitude campaign, and I was on it. And uh, that's how it played out. I have to say, I think you demonstrate the essence of true, authentic leadership. So, and I appreciate you sharing your wisdom oh, and, and you. your story there. Yeah. Appreciate that. And, and, and as we're winding down, I, I know that you are working on a book, right? You and, and, yes. and, and your um, friend of yours. Yes. Right? So just yes. curious, when do you anticipate it coming? Absolutely. Out? Appreciate that. No, no, no. We're, we're excited. Uh, yeah. Se seven years in the, um, in the making, we both had day jobs. I want to add right. that, but uh, it was a lot about refining. What does it take to become an authentic later, uh, leader? So our, our focus, and we call it our, your leadership journey. It's yeah. about embracing your learning journey. You don't have to go to an Ivy League school and get an MBA or go to Annapolis and or join the Marines or whatever those things are. Use your life, both your past and as you move forward, as your learning journey. That's how you can step up uh, to embracing your leadership. So we have it in the hands of a potential publisher. 
and uh, they are now reviewing it. So excited. We finally had to lay down our, our pens when yeah. we basically ordered each other, put down your pen, stop yeah. writing, uh, challenged each other, I should say, uh, to do that. But that's, uh, so we're waiting to hear uh, whether that is something that's going to be uh, well received. And if not, we'll just go down to the copier <laughs> run out some copies well i have no doubt it'll be successful and uh we'll definitely bring you back on once no it's, i appreciate uh, that published yeah. and, and talk more about it look forward to we're we're going to move forward with our um, company called on mission leadership and try to make a difference here and how we how we help people walk their leadership journeys well appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and appreciate you your wisdom absolutely thank you Thank you for what you're doing. This is excellent. Appreciate it.